So, so far I've made videos about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Those three settings are called the exposure triangle because those are the three settings you're going to be adjusting in order to adjust your exposure. That's really not much else you can do in camera to control your exposure. And now I want to start synthesizing those separate pieces of information into a coherent strategy that you can use to calculate your exposure and dial in the right settings depending on where you are, what you're doing, and what you're shooting. So the problem with aperture, shutter speed, and ISO is they all use different units of measurement. So we need to come up with one unifying system of measurement so that we can kind of do, make apples to apples comparisons across all these different settings because shutter speed is measured in units of time and aperture is measured in the diameter of a hole relative to its focal length and ISO is just a number indicating how much you've increased the gain on the sensitivity of your sensor. So it turns out there is a way to speak the same language regarding all three of these settings and it's called a stop. You may have heard that before when they talk about photography. You might have heard F stops or stop something down or this is two stops faster. So a stop is just a relative unit of measure to refer to the quantity of light. And so one stop is a halving or a doubling of however much light you have at the, at the moment. So if you double the amount of light being captured, you are increasing your exposure by one stop. If you cut the amount of light in half, you are decreasing the amount of exposure by one stop. That's pretty much all there is to it. Pretty simple, as most good ideas are. So the easiest one to start with is shutter speed. How do we turn shutter speed into stops? It's pretty simple because shutter speed is already just a measure of a unit of time. So if I had a 1 60th of a second shutter speed, and I wanted to increase my exposure by one stop, that means I'd need to leave my shutter open twice as long. So instead of 1 60th, we would go to 1 30th because 1 30th is twice as long as 1 60th. That's just math and that's how fractions work. You should have learned this in third grade. If I wanted to reduce the amount of light coming in by half, if I wanted to reduce my exposure or underexpose by one stop, I would go from 1 60th to 1 120th because that is now leaving the shutter open for half as long, so it's letting in half as much light. Easy, right? So the next value to figure out is your ISO, and ISO is actually simpler than shutter speed even, because again, ISO is just a number that was arbitrarily assigned by the International Standards Organization. So if your base ISO is 100, to increase your exposure by one stop, you just go to ISO 200. One more stop from that is ISO 400. Another stop is 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, you get it. So ISO, easier than shutter speed. Just double the number. Aperture is where it gets a little tricky. There's no easy mathematical solution for this one. You're just gonna have to memorize a series of numbers. And this is the series of numbers. I'll put them on the screen so you can screenshot and study. F1.4 and then F2 and then F2.8, and then F4, F5.6, F8, F11, F16, and F22. Every time you go up a number, you go down one stop. So F2 lets in half as much light as 1.4, F5.6 lets in half as much light as F4. There's no solution for this other than just memorizing the numbers. So now you've got all three of the settings that make up your exposure triangle all transcribed into one unified language where you can relate one to the other very easily. And now it's time to start using these in conjunction with a feature I haven't talked about yet, and that's your camera's exposure meter. I'm going to show you what that looks like. The exposure meter is a huge tool that's just going to tell you how overexposed or underexposed your camera thinks the image is based on what you've dialed in settings wise and you can use that to avoid getting too off target once you start fiddling with manual settings because the first time you try it you go oh I want a thousandth of a second at f8 at ISO 100 why is my image coming out dark if you looked at your exposure meter you'd know 
that you were making too many things too dark. You need to add some light in somewhere. So we'll take a look at what that looks like in your camera. All right, so I apologize that this is kind of hard to see, but here's a good example where I got the camera in full manual. It's the things we just spoke about, one one thousandth of a second, f8, ISO 100. And we can see that this image is way too dark. Our exposure meter is blinking at us with a negative three, saying it's at at least three stops underexposed more than that, most likely. So we gotta rescue this thing. Let's see what we can do. We can open up our shutter speed, one stop, two stops, three stops. And now we finally see that we're still 2.7 stops overexposed. So we can get some more light by opening up our aperture a little bit. We're at 6.3. Now we're only two stops overexposed. And now we can add two stops to their ISO maybe. Go to 200, go to 400. And now that's 0.7. It still thinks it's a little too dark. So I can drop, I can darken a little bit of shutter speed, let a little more shutter speed in. So this is what the camera thinks is an ideal exposure here because now we can see our EV meter is 0.0. .0. So I can then, you know, darken things up with, if, if this was too bright for my taste, I don't like these highlights on the walls, I could do some things like I could close down my aperture. And the EV meter says it's a stop under underexposed, but I think this looks fine. So the EV meter is not a be all end all, but it is a good uh, a good indicator to keep you in the ballpark of a correct exposure. So that example was a little bit messy. It's really bright out here. It was hard to find something that would look decent on the on the camera screen, but hopefully it got the point across that you can use your exposure meter on your camera to kind of play hot and cold with your settings and see if the changes you're making are moving you in the right direction or in the wrong direction. And it'll give you some practice trading aperture for shutter speed or shutter speed for ISO and finding a group of settings that is gonna give you the results you want in your image and also give you the, a correct exposure. So hopefully it gave you at least a little bit of an idea. Another way you can experiment with your exposure meter is by putting your camera in P mode. P stands for uh, kind of programmed auto exposure mode. It's a slightly more advanced version of the green full auto mode. It does let you adjust a few things like your ISO and, and your exposure meter. So put your camera in P mode and try dialing your exposure up and down and you can see what your camera thinks is the best way to increase exposure or decrease exposure depending on what options your camera has, depending on where you already are in your settings, your camera will choose how it wants to make that image lighter or darker. And that's gonna vary by the camera. It's usually going to change your ISO and then it's going to start affecting your shutter speed and then it might start affecting your aperture, but each camera behaves a little bit differently. So again, try it out. I find that in a lot of cases, if I'm out and about in full sunlight, I find that my camera tends to overexpose what it thinks is an ideal exposure. I think that's about two thirds of a stop too bright. So I can use my exposure meter, my exposure compensation to tell my camera, hey, whatever you meter, whatever you think is right, take two thirds of a stop off of that, make it two thirds of a stop darker, and that'll give it the, expo the look that I want, which for me mostly protects my highlights and keeps me from blowing out highlights. So let me give you an example of where I think this knowledge can really help you out when it comes to going into unknown situations with new equipment or into known situations with new equipment. Let's say the last time I came here and rode Pirates of the Caribbean, I was using a, an f1.4 lens. So at f1.4, I was using a 1 one one sixtieth of a second shutter speed and an ISO of eh, 6400. And I liked the way those images came out. But this time, I don't have that lens with me. Let's say now, the fastest lens I have has an aperture of f2.8. So if you remember, that's two stops darker than f1.4. So what do I need to do to my settings in order to get that same exposure? I could lengthen my shutter speed by two stops, go from 160th, half of that's 80, half of that's 40. So a 40th of a second shutter speed, that might be too slow, I might get motion blur on, even on a ride like Pirates. What's my other option? Instead of shutter speed, I could boost my ISO by two stops. From 6400, I can go to 
25,600, that's 6,400 times four. And it'll be a noisier image, but I'll still get the same shutter speed to freeze motion and I'll get the same exposure. So I didn't have to go into the ride and try some things and shoot things. I just used the exposure triangle and I used what I know about what those settings actually mean to make an educated guess as to what's gonna give me a good result. When you're traveling, when you're paying a lot of money to come here, maybe only for one day, maybe you don't wanna spend an hour riding a bunch of rides and screwing around with your settings and experimenting and hoping to find something that works. So, knowledge is power. So I think I'm gonna end it here. This was kind of a weird, long, rambling video. I hope it made sense. This is something, again, that you have to really get out and experiment with and find what works for your lenses, for your camera, and for the types of situations that you find yourself shooting in. But hopefully, but hopefully this gave you some place to start. And from here you can go forth and learn and dial in your own technique. So thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.